here we're, on we're, the Susquehanna in January. Right. I'm with my buddy Bo, and we're gonna eventually put these in. Absolutely. So the river's up. Bloody. It's, it's muddy. And we're just going from creek mouth to creek mouth. And this is one that I don't I don't know that this is a good winter spot. Okay. But I was here in September and I saw a bunch of big fish in it. It's deep in the creek mouth and it's got high banks. Okay. And we're just gonna walk. We're not gonna put these in right away. Um, I'll get stick with you. I hope if if it's good, I got the carts there that we can bring these kayaks down but uh it's we're, we're traveling light and uh and gonna hit a bunch of different spots so well, that's, that sounds like a plan to me let's right. do it all right we got cleaner water in the creek mouth here not much of a place to stand to cast. Not, not much place at all. But I like how it looks here. I just don't know if it's here. Look how fast that water is. Oh, I'm telling you, it's moving. It is some kind of rolling down through here. So we're at what, like eight or nine feet or something at the Harrisburg gauge. But I can see them being right here. I want to find out if there's, if I get a bump here, I know that there's fish here. And I would be happy to fish this creek all day. You know, we'll bring kayaks down, but I gotta, I gotta have some faith that they're here. And I, I don't know that, that I do yet because clearly there's, there's no current protection right out in front of this. Either they winter in this creek the whole time or they don't at all. deep right at the base of that, that root ball, that tree right there. And it's the only hard bottom I've, I've found. Most of this is muck on this side. I'm standing on muck, but that side has the hard bottom. We've worked it, but Bo, how long do you think we've been here? 45 minutes. Huh? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. If I don't get bit here in the next five, I think we ought to pull up and consider this was a investment in time scouting and, and move to some that I know that there's some fish. So three days from now, my wife is going to ask me, how the heck did you get poison ivy in January? Why <laughs> the crawling in it? Fuzzy vines. All right, we're gonna hop back in the truck and go for a ride. Yes, sir. Got some smallies. Let's go get them. We hope. I, you know, I, I had, I had to know, and, and I don't know that they aren't, they weren't in there in a different part. The, the two places I like in these flooded creek mouths are right where we were, uh -huh. is an active feeding spot. All the way up in it where the current starts to flow, but it's still backed up like a pool, like a pond. And the third one is the tough one to get. And it's, it's a flat. Inside the creek. It's in the creek, it, a flat, hard bottom, like a gravel bottom, but it's flat, like okay. a big flat patch of gravel and for that we need kayaks in there right. to really explore it but go we're it. gonna go do that somewhere else and we'll get in these all right we're some miles upstream it's like Bo dropped his yeah he dropped these <laughs> we found another creek mouth to put in and uh, the water's nice and clean and green. There you go, man. Oh, sorry. I think we're gonna catch them here. I do too. It'll water looks good. <laughs> Real good. Clear, clear water. And the river is right there. So I'm gonna start with something really 
small and dark. Nope. Bo's got a stick fish. Ain't the first time. Nope. We all catch stick fish. So I've moved right out to the mouth of it, and this is the, the most upstream little pocket of non-moving water, right up against that uh, that sycamore tree truck. And if I'm bringing back grass, I don't know, I'm less excited about it. I'd, I'd like to see a hard bottom there, but we gotta try it. What do you think? I think I'm impatient with it because I I don't know that this this is one that I mean I haven't caught them here in winter before so okay. it's it's absolutely still scouting yeah. and I'm tempted to say let's just go to one that I know okay. that they jump up into. <laughs> I'm with you. All right. I, I thought, it's you know, looking it, at the watercolor. Everything. Yeah, watercolor is one thing. Um, it's you. You got to imagine if this if this river gets real low, mm -hmm. we haven't had a whole lot of depth in any of it except for right at the mouth. Yeah, and that's not a whole lot of room for them. No, and I think it's just too shallow. In I mean, it's it's up a lot. If you take three feet of water out of here, what do you think this you looks like? You ain't gonna have nothing in here. Right. You know. So I don't want to call that a bust, but this is what you do. <laughs> and this is what we do all Explore. spring. Explore. Well, we got two of them that we've checked out mm -hmm. and I've gathered enough, as much information, dragging a jig, seeing, watching the angle of the line, yes. feeling if it's hard bottom, thinking about that creek and then the last one when this river isn't Flooded. You know, just down from truly flood stage, okay. I think. Um, we're going to go to another one. And this one, I've... It's Pretty happened confident. before. Well, it's... When it gets low, they move out of there. But it is a good high water creek mouth. So, right. But this is the process. The plan. Yep. The plan. Let's do it. You good over here? Yep. I should have it in drive first. <laughs> I was gonna say, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> All right, if you have watched many or any of my winter river smallmouth fishing videos, you'll know where I'm at. Um, I stopped short of going all the way to the next creek that I was interested in going to and looked here at the Juniata and I said, that actually looks pretty good and the wind isn't bad. So we're gonna give it a shot here for a little while, see what we can catch. And then maybe, I don't know, maybe we just finish up the day here. We'll see. Get yourself stopped. You're drifting right now. What I would do is is hook your ankle on a root ball on the bank. Okay. So you're stopped, that way you're not drifting. Okay. And you can feel the bite better that way. Okay. Bo just got one. What do you hit? Jig, black blue jig. Nice, man. Very cool. That'll work. That'll work. Those one water clocks and all are all the stuff that happened. Nice, man. Yes, sir. Good job. Singular, Dunk. hard hit. All right. So, yeah. hated not have it in there that far, 
but it was a nice singular crisp whack and I've been experimenting and I'm gonna con huh yeah it's a jig fish I'm gonna continue to experiment this year on heavier jigs and this is a 3 8 ounce hair jig heavier jigs with uh, that I usually throw. This is a 3 8 and um, you know, I'm gonna let you breathe for fish. I can't tell you the last time I threw a jig this heavy in a river, um, but it allowed me to keep it in that eddy longer than the usual 3 16 or, or 8 ounce jig that I, that I usually fish. So. So here's the kind of internal debate that I'm having in my brain. That fish just hit this 3 8 ounce. So heavier jigs may be a little more snaggy, but you're able to keep the line taut more in, in heavier flow or heavier wind and feel that bite more. It also ticks on the bottom harder compared to what in my normal, you know, this is... A little bit more than eighth, but I'm I'm usually happy throwing sixteenth to an eighth uh, because this has that fine wire hook that they just move with it and and you got them, you own them. So I guess it comes down to do you want to have the advantage of automatic hookups or you do you want to have the advantage of of feeling bites better? In that case, I felt the bite like a single thunk and despite all the current that I would have not felt this one how long would he have held this one if I didn't feel him and swing on it it may not have mattered because this one may not have gotten to where that one was at the end of the of the eddy so I'm experimenting heavier jigs heavier jig or lighter jig is is sort of the the ongoing experiment both of them are black both, both of them have hair in silicone and round rubber. I'm gonna keep fishing this one. Oh, off. Did you get off? That's a fish that I think with the fine wire hook, I would have caught. Assuming I felt the hit. I think I only felt the hit because it was a heavier jig. But the heavier jig head probably just didn't part his jaw. I'm going to tighten my drag a little bit until that hooks up, but it was a good singular dunk. And I moved him 10, 15 feet. Maybe I never poked him. But that fine wire hook always pokes him. So, there is an internal debate. How can I do this better? Jigs in winter don't always get a lot of bites, but they get the good ones. Alright, that one goes 18. Has the black blotch on his tail. Pretty fish. So I'm generally happy when I'm fishing if I'm learning something. And I think I started out this trip saying I want to learn new spots. And, you know, we we explored, hit two places that were new in winter. 
and this is not a, a new place. This is a place where we know that we're gonna we're gonna catch them because they're here. But I'm I'm learning a three eighth ounce jig, so I'm learning feeling comfortable with a heavier jig than I'm used to, and I think it makes sense for for the river being up as much as it is. It's it's a good match, and maybe the other lighter jig with a finer wire hook when they're not, you know, they're a little more spread out and they're maybe require a little bit more finesse from a jig. Um, that that smaller one maybe makes more sense. But this is also growth for Bo. I mean, he's never went to a river smallmouth fish, and he just caught his first today, which is <laughs> is good. Oh, oh, that was a good fish too. Oh. So we're paddling upstream. Usually I have the motors. I decided not to bring the motors today just for ease of put in and take out in multiple places. And in most places it's, yeah, you want to keep it lightweight, put in there, fish there. Um, what we got here and it's like yeah there's fish we're gonna stick with it and there's been a couple times where I really missed the motor like where I'm holding position just with the, the paddle and I didn't get real steady and missed the fish back there you know, when you get stopped whether it's with the motor or the anchor you can feel the bite a little bit better but you got to kind of hover in one hand the paddle So one of the nicer things about being in an inflatable kayak that you don't know until you own one is that you can anchor all sorts of places that are in a roller molded boat that sits lower in the water that you can't. Like I'm in a, a, a pretty decent amount of current. Like I'm not in the, the fastest current there, but there's also current moving pretty good on the right. And uh, I'm able to position here in a way that if I was in a hard boat, I don't think I could. Uh, it's because it, it sits on top of the water and it requires less anchor weight and length of the, uh, the line out to, to really hold it in place. And for this higher flow, it's, it's definitely an advantage. For certain, there are still some areas out here that nobody has any any business anchoring at all but you know this one is is working for me right now gathered flesh before the head stopped at the jaw and I'm starting to think that in order to to get good hook penetration with this big football jig that I need I need the I need bigger hooks than what I put in there yeah I think the back of the uh, the back of the hook hits some part of the inside which pushes the top part the pointy part into something and it gathers flesh on the way to the opening of the mouth so, I don't know it's all of this is is stuff that makes me think about my tackle crafting and how to how to do it better so, another nice fish 17 and a half incher Go ahead and get a little bit of video for feeding the Instagram. Okay, Let's see if there's another one up there. You know, we've got some of the scrub brush here, 
an area where there's foam just sitting there. That's where that fish was. And I had to stop it in order to, I don't know, to just feel that solid connection with the bottom. Let it sit. See if I get another. I'm averaging 18 inches on the three that I've caught. So not getting great numbers. I've missed a couple nice ones, which I think were also in that 18 inch range. So we worked pretty hard to get up here. This should give you some sort of indication of how much flow there is. I mean, the main river is really blowing out hard, but the Juniata is still moving. We caught them. We did. We did. We definitely <laughs> you, did. You got two? I got two, landed. caught two, landed two, and had two I missed. I got three into the boat, and I missed, I think I missed like four or five. I don't know. Like, I have footage of each of them. I'll have to count and see how many how many misses that was. Yeah. I'm getting used to that football head. In, and what I, three eighth ounce. Three right? eighth ounce, and I like that I can keep it in more current. I like okay. that I can, I can feel the bottom better. Better. But I think I'm missing fish. I want to go, go back and put bigger hooks in that do it mold that I make okay. it. Okay. Because I think it's going to be taller, a taller hook, and it might have a better chance. What size? What size hook are you throwing on? I think it's a three, a three, three out. I think I have some fours. Okay. So that may work out. Let's get out of here before we run into these branches. Yes, before sir. Before it gets cold. Let's go. All right. Get colder. Fun trip.